Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Rat Selectors. And today we're looking at five arcade games for the Dreamcast that were non-fighters. I know it's hard to believe, but there are more than that. And this is just volume one. So let's start off with Bust and Move 4. Developed by Taito, released in arcades sometime in 1998, and on the Dreamcast May 31st, 2000, and sold 26,000 units in North America. Bust and Move 4, also known in Japan as Puzzle Bobble, is a puzzle game. I guess the Japanese title makes it a lot more sense. Its premise is super simple and super addictive. You are a Bub and Bob, a green and blue bubble dinosaur, and you control their bubble cannon that shoot colored bubbles to match at the top of the screen. The addiction comes in the form of chain reactions and the sense of getting right piece for the right moment. Puzzle Bobble features seven game modes, ranging from puzzle mode, story puzzle, versus and edit mode. Playing Bust and Move in arcades was a blast. Trying to get the proper color for the proper chain reaction was always fun. And always hearing them chant and scream on screen was always a great addition. Daytona USA, developed by Amusement Vision Genki, released in arcades in April 1994 and on the Dreamcast March 12, 2001, and sold 70,000 units in North America. Daytona USA in North America, also known as Daytona USA 2001, features all tracks and courses of past Daytona series, and the ability to play all tracks in mirrored, reverse, and mirrored reverse. Daytona USA also features online gameplay for up to four players. Daytona's gameplay has been said by many critics to be chock full of features, but its controls are very responsive. Fun fact, Daytona USA 2001's online features were removed from PAL regions due to developers giving away a server block that belonged to AT&T. Not necessarily a bad thing, but when you're taking a corner at full speed, you're always having to either oversteer or understeer and smacking into the wall or smacking into vehicles or riding on the grass. I guess that could be the issue of the driver actually driving. So for me per se, I was all over the road and didn't finish where I needed to finish or anywhere nearly where I wanted to finish. Sega Marine Fishing. Developer WoW Entertainment released in arcades in 1999 and on the Dreamcast August 20th, 2000 and sold 140,000 units and outselling Sega Bass Fishing 2 5 to 1. A port of the Sega Naomi's arcade of the same name, Sega Marine Fishing for the Dreamcast is a fantastic port that introduced many games that you can win various items from the likes of fishing rods and the selection of clothing. Sega Marine Fishing is a sequel to Sega Bass Fishing with 15 different fish ranging from barracudas to stingrays. Considering I don't own the fishing rod, it was still easy to use just the Dreamcast remote to play this game. It was a simple button press and a cast away it went. And reeling it in was just as simple, just a full pull on the trigger and you got your reel back to you just as fast. The ability to catch fish and put them on display as one of the features in this game was a nice little addition where you could do a little museum tour of what you've caught. Sega Rally 2 or Sega Rally Championship, developed by Sega AM5, released in arcades February 28th, 1998, and released on the Dreamcast October 31st in 1999, and sold 145,000 units. As a standalone sit-down arcade racer, Sega Rally Championship's arcade port for the Sega Dreamcast delivers on all fronts. It's arcade-style racing that includes car customization from tires, to gear ratios. Sega Rally looks and feels fantastic as you're power sliding through corners. If you're familiar with Rally off-road racers, Sega Rally has an AI companion that lets you know what turn is just up ahead. Sega Rally Championship features arcade mode, 10 year championship mode, versus and time trials mode. The visuals are fantastic in this game. From the early get go, as soon as you push the gas, you're basically drawn in. The amount of dirt and mud and snow that builds up on your car is outstanding. If you landed in a puddle and took a mud bath, it showed directly onto your car. So it's just to see that, on a Dreamcast, it was way ahead of its time. Some arcades weren't even able to do that, whereas this was actually allowing you to see that build up on your car right away. Hydro Thunder, developed by Midway, released in arcades in March 1999, and on the Dreamcast September 9th, 1999, sold 200,000 units. Another sit down cabinet when we're released in arcades. While playing on the Dreamcast, you get to sit down on your couch instead. Hydro Thunder is a speedboat racer with the emphasis on speed. Hydro Thunder delivers, unlocks, variety of tracks, 14 to be exact, and secrets of plenty. Controls are super simplistic and can be figured out within seconds of the race. Fun fact, when this was released on the Dreamcast, this actual version had a lot of bugs and there was a lot of problems just booting up the game. It also got launched as a hot new label, which was a few other games. Mortal Kombat was one of them and also NFL Blitz, I believe it was 2000 fell into that label of issues while Midway was porting them over to the Dreamcast. There was something wrong with them, so they ended up putting 
re-releasing them as a hot new label. And there you have it, five arcade Dreamcast games that are not fighters and are still unbelievably fun. From Sega Rally to Hydro Thunder to Sega Marine Fishing. It was such a blast replaying these games again. Let me know if you guys played any of these games in the comments down below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks, guys.